Welcome back to Developer's Home. Today we are going to discuss about data engineering problems. As we discussed earlier that we are going to solve SQL problems and all the data engineering related problems. We are dividing this in a three parts. We will solve this problem using SQL and in SQL we will use Postgres SQL or MySQL. We'll also use a NoSQL. In NoSQL, we'll use MongoDB or Cassandra. And we'll also solve same problem using Apache Spark. And in a Spark, we'll be solving this problem using two ways, PySpark and Spark SQL. Today, we are taking very basic and simple example and we'll be solving using Postgres SQL and PySpark and Spark SQL. Before starting that, please go through this blog and understand that how we are planning this learning and how we are doing system setup will also require here Postgres SQL, Apache Spark setting and Jupyter Notebook setting. So please go to earlier blogs and understand how to set up your system for solving these problems and how to set up your system for data engineering. Starting with this problem, first thing is go to this uh, github repo and clone this repo in your system so we'll have this program details plus you'll also have this sample data and sample structure for creating table so here i have already cloned this and now what i am doing is before going to problem i am first creating tables so every day we'll have this one problem with that problem we'll have this data structure and we'll have that data in csv format so can we can easily load this data and we can solve this problem so now i am going to postgres sql which we have installed in our earlier video and we also configured so that we can use it now so if i go to this github i can see that now i have one sql and that sql will be helpful for creating this table so i am going to this sql and taking definition which will help me to create this table so i am taking this definition going back here and now i will take help of query tool and with the help of query tool i will first create this table and here we go so we have our table is uh, created if I do refresh here, we'll have this table available. Okay, it says that this table is already available. So let me just drop this table. And once this table is dropped, we'll be able to create this table. And now we have successful message. So if I go here or refresh and now I have this table available but I still need to load data into this table and for that I need to use import functionality of Postgres SQL. What you can do is you can first download this CSV in your local system so it will be easy to install it from here. So now it is having this CSV data and I am also gonna load this CSV data into my table. So if you do right click and then here you will see import export data in that I will use import data. I will select directory where I have this uh, data so I am selecting this one and now I am saying that CSV is the format of the file I will click on this one let's see progress and it says it's completed so now my next step is just execute this query so we'll be understanding that this data is successfully loaded into table so we can see that in this table we have total 75 rows and data is loaded here now if you again go to that problem statement and understand that what we want to do so first thing is list all the employees whose salary is more than 100k so what we see in this table is we have id first name last name salary and department id so we have salary as a one column and we require employees who is having salary more than 100k so for that we need to use a filter and here in sql we have where and where we say that salary is greater than 100k so is this 100k yes this is 100k and now we'll execute we'll have that okay this is the employees who's having salary more than 100k we can see that okay in total we have 39 employees so this will filter out it will remove all the employees who is having salary less than 100k and it will only list 
who is having salary more than that just to understand what we can do is we'll also do order by so order by will help to sort this all the data so first we're doing order by and we'll see starting salary more than 100k so we can see that okay we have now 100k and this is the highest salary which is 210k and now if i see i if i want to see this salary in descending order i can do this way so i can see this salary in descending order so yes so now we understood how can we use wear condition and how can we use uh, order by which can help us to do ascending and descending order in sql next what was the next problem that was provide distinct department id so here we have one column which is uh, department id so now i will use this column so we want to get distinct or unique department id so we'll just use this distinct function to get that distinct department id i will do execute and i will have distinct department id so that is also now solved just to understand distinct uh, what i will do i will i let's say i also want unique employees so what i can do uh, distinct first name and last name so that will give me all the distinct employees so basically distinct function will be used to get unique values if you can pass one column you will get unique values for that column if you pass multiple columns you will get values based on that so this is how we can use a distinct function to get unique values in that particular table next thing is provide a first and last name of employees we already got a unique first name and last name so getting first name is last name is not difficult it's a very easy question and that's why we are having this all the uh, quiz question asked so what are the columns we are passing here we'll be getting that as an output we can also rename column name by giving alias let's say i want to get this as a last name or you want to say that as a your surname you can also do that so as surname so now this column name will be changed with the surname next thing is provide all the details with the employee whose last name is johnson so earlier we use where condition and now we use that where condition again which says last name is equal to johnson so let's copy it from here if i can see it no not here let's do filter with uh, last name is equal to johnson and here i want all the details so what i am doing is i am doing select star from this table and here i am getting that okay all the details of employee whose last name is johnson so this is how you know that in sql we learn that how to use filter how to do order by how to pass column values to get particular columns from that table how to give alias or other names and to any particular columns so this is how we can write query in postgres sql same queries you can write in mysql they both follow ncsql at certain level they both have certain functions but they both at the basic level follows ncsql so from the next problems what we'll do is we'll create this table using provided sql script and then load data using import functionality so this is we'll do in all the problems and then we'll solve this problem now next step which is solving same problem using apache spark so now what we will do is we'll go to <coughs> we'll go to open this uh, jupyter lab and in a jupyter lab first we need to create this csv file paste this data here so we'll have this csv file at the same location where we are writing this jupyter notebook and now first thing is we need to open this into jupyter notebook and we first need to you know that create spark session so what i am doing is i am executing this so it will start my spark session 
and now I am saying that start my spark session with application name as a problem zero so now this is also done and now let me go and check that uh, on which port number this session is started and I have seen that it started on port number 4041 so now from here we'll be able to see that our spark job is started and which with the name problem zero I have executed this earlier and that's why you can see that multiple stages and multiple jobs executed earlier but now if you want to see that what what is the current execution we can also come here and can see that okay these are the current executions so let's go and execute so our first step as we discussed earlier we need to load this data into spark data frame and for that we have spark.read format currently we have this data into csv format so we pass that format as csv we can pass multiple formats here you can pass json you can pass parquet you can pass delta so these are the different formats in which we can store this data so we can pass these different formats and we can load this data from this file into spark data frame and after that once we have this data into spark data frame we can apply different functions available with spark we are also saying that header is equal to true it means first line is having that header and we also want to say that infer schema is equal to true it means also apply all the data types let's say i have salary which is in an integer i have first name last name which is in a string so also apply that data types and that's why we are saying that infer schema is equal to true and at the end i am saying that load it from employee salary dot ts csv once we load this data so now let's see if i load this if i go here i can see that one job is currently executed and which is like loading data next task is just to make sure that data is correctly loaded we first check okay what is the schema and we see that okay this is the correct schema just to make sure that we are having data correctly loaded we execute we say that okay employee data frame dot show which will show all the data available into that data frame now currently it's showing top 20 rows but if in case you want to see all the rows what we can do is n is equal to 100 and it will show all the rows in this table so now it is showing all the 75 rows which is there in this table and just to make sure that if you want to see that okay how many rows are there so what we can do is we can write uh, let's add one part here and we'll do dot uh, count and which will give which will give how many rows are there in that csv file or in this data frame so it will say that okay 75 rows in this data frame now our first problem is we want to filter this our data and we just want employees whose salary is more than 100k so same way in postgres sql we had a uh, var condition same way in uh, spark we have also var condition and we also have filter so there are two options before going that before going there okay so we have this uh, data loaded into data frame so now we can solve this problem using two ways one using pi spark sql it means pi spark function and other way is using spark sql so now first we'll be solving this using pi spark and second will solve this problem using spark sql so first thing is filtering this with 100k so we have this filter function and now in this filter function if we pass that salary is greater than 100k and then display everything so it will display it this way so this is the one way where you know that we can filter this data other ways we can also use where condition which is also exactly same so if you use filter or if you use where both is the same so now if i use where so it will also display same thing second thing is i want distinct department id and for that we have 
distinct function and using distinct function we can get distinct department id so now if i do this and i will be getting distinct department id after that we want first and last name so we have select and then we'll specify all the columns which we require here so we'll pass first name last name and we'll be getting all the employees first and last name and these are the uh, queries which is very basic queries and data is also 75 rows and that's why you know that these are the all the queries executing in seconds or milliseconds you see that all the queries which we executed it took 83 seconds 0 0.1 0 0.1 seconds 64 milliseconds and that's why you know that we can't see anything which shows that running query but you know that if in case your query which runs for five minutes ten minutes there will be a one more tab here and which will be showing that running query and we can see that okay this is the query running we can go inside and we can check that okay what is actually happening how many stages that query is divided and if you want to see that okay dag graph which is dynamic acyclic graph we can also see that but for now we are not going into details because these are the very basic and simple queries you can also see event timeline uh, for this um, session so we can see that okay currently we are executing this all the queries and that's why we can see this instances here okay so now we got this select query using that we are getting first name and last name and our last question was to get employee whose last name is Johnson so now we are using that again filter condition and using that we are getting employees whose last name is Johnson so this is how we solve this problem using PySpark now we want to solve this problem using spark SQL so to so before solving this problem using spark SQL we need to load same data into a temporary table or we can say that we are creating how table so we have this data currently loaded into data frame so what we are doing is we are writing this statement which is says that create or replace temp view so using that data frame we are creating this template temporary table which is temp employee so now we have this data available into temp employee so if i execute this i have this all data available into temp employee table after that it will be simply same sql queries which we executed into postgres sql we can execute same way so it's like same ncsql and we can execute same query here and we'll be getting same answers only difference is we need to write that sql context dot sql and then write same query let's say select star from temp employee and we are getting same data now if I say select star from temp employee where salary is greater than 100k I will be getting same data I can use a distinct function same way as we use in a postgres sql same way you specify all the column names and we will be getting that data we can use a where condition let's say here um, on postgres sql we use order by just to get this salary in ascending and descending order so now if I use that order by salary and now I will be getting this salary in ascending header. So now I am getting this salary in ascending order. Let's see you want to get this salary in descending order. So I'll be doing DSC same way as we did in Postgres SQL and now I will be getting this data in descending order. So this is how spark sql works so whatever queries we are writing in postgres sql or mysql same query we can write here and we can solve these problems and again same thing right after executing this query if you want to store this data into data frame and you want to write back to any file you can also do that let's an example i am doing here that this is my final result so final data frame is equal to this one and instead of doing this what I will do is just store this result in final data frame so this is stored here now I if I go here final data frame 
dot print schema so it will be printing that print schema and it will be printing that output here i will say that okay now i want to display that data so final data frame dot uh, show so i'll be seeing same data here and if you want to store this data again in a csv format i can write that query on top of this data frame so it's it's up to you if you want to use park sql or if you want to use PySpark functions we'll be solving this problem using both ways and then whatever way it's preferable with you you can use that so we have solved this problem if you want to get this uh, jupyter notebook code or if you want to get that sql queries you can use this github repo and yes we'll be solving this problem every day and you will get these details on this blog on this github repo and you will be getting this all the videos on this youtube channel thanks for watching and see you in next video